All right, welcome everyone. <clears throat> we'll get started in just a minute. Thanks for being here. This is the uh, intro to Gorilla 7 scheduling and budgeting. And we're going to start in just a couple seconds. I'm just going to get all everything I need ready. All right. Once again, welcome everyone to the Gorilla Scheduling uh, and Budgeting Intro class. Um, we're going to go for, um, we have at least 90 minutes uh, scheduled. It don't, might not take that long, but uh, there's a lot to cover. Uh, I'm going to try to do um, scheduling and then budgeting and then leave uh, some time at the end for Q&A. So if you have any questions that you want to ask, about Gorilla, or even just about scheduling and budgeting in general, about pre-production, about formatting a screenplay, about uh, you know anything in general uh, in terms of production, you can go ahead and give, uh, uh, ask me. I'll be happy to do my best to answer that uh, question. I've been doing this for 30 some odd years, so I know a lot. Um, if you guys have any questions while I'm going through the presentation, please feel free to chat them in. Let me see if I can get my chat uh, window up here. There we go. Um, and I will look over to the chat every once in a while to make sure that, uh, that I see uh, if someone chats in. Keep your mics muted if you don't mind. At the end of the Q&A, um, if you, I'm sorry, at the end of the presentation, if you want to unmute, unmute your mic to ask a question, that'll be totally fine. It'd be lo lovely to hear your voice. So, Let's get started. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to start with Final Draft. Now you don't have to use Final Draft, of course, but uh, that's uh, you know the the um, most well known of the screenplay programs. And we're just going to take a minute looking at the screenplay and how to format the screenplay properly because that really is the beginning of getting your information from the screenplay into Gorilla. Now you don't have to even use a screenplay program at all. You can literally create scenes and breakdown sheets in Gorilla. A lot of people do this if you're doing documentaries, if you're doing a short, if you're doing something that doesn't really have dialogue in it, if it's just really more of a storyboard uh, sort of a situation, or even silent films, student films. A lot of people don't use a screenplay program, but a lot of people, of course, do. So I just have a sample screenplay up here. And as you can see, it's already numbered, and that is actually very important. You do want to number your scenes before you import it into Gorilla. Um, and of course, you can just go up to the production scene numbers and do that. Any uh, Most screenplay programs can do that. Now, another thing you can do in Final Draft, and you don't have to do this at all either. You can do this in Gorilla, but I'm going to spend a few minutes on it, is uh, tag your screenplay. Now, this, of course, can be done in Gorilla. That's one of the big things about the breakdown sheet. But you can do sort of what we call it pre-tagging. Um, in a screenplay program like Final Draft or even Movie Magic Screenwriter for that matter. So if I go up to the production pull down menu and I select tags mode, you're gonna see all these colors pop up and that's because I tagged this screenplay previously. And all tagging means is you've gone through the screenplay and highlighted certain words or phrases and attached them to a category, meaning that you need to schedule those items on breakdown sheets, okay? So that's really all I want to show you with that. And if you have any questions about screenplays or final draft, I'd be happy to, to, to answer that. So let's pop on over to Gorilla. So when you first launch Gorilla, uh, remember it is uh, scheduling and budgeting, or you, you could get one or the other if you wanted to also. We do sell them separate, but I'm going to go over both of them. It is one program. So uh, you have the scheduling side and you have the budgeting side. So again, I'm going to go over the scheduling side first. Here on the left-hand side of the screen are the schedules. And you can have as many schedules as you want loaded into Gorilla. And on the right-hand side, you're going to have your budgets. 
So let's go into one of our schedules. We're just going to click on the name of the schedule here up on the top. And we're going to go into what's called the breakdown sheet screen. And this is the main screen uh, um, in Gorilla Scheduling, the breakdown sheet screen. This is the information that was imported from the screenplay. And as you can see, it does look somewhat screenplay-esque because you have the interior, exterior field up here. You've got your set field here, your day, night field here. If you click on it, you can see all these times of day, right? You've got your page count, and that comes in from Final Draft. That comes in from the screenplay. It's calculated in the program, and we just bring it in. You've got your scene number here, um, and I'm going to go over a few other things in a, in, a, in a couple of minutes. But most importantly, the scenes come in. Okay, um, when you import from an FDX file, and FDX is the file format that Final Draft uses, um, you can import what's called the screenplay display. Okay, so um, another thing, another thing about why I mentioned tagging in Final Draft before you bring it into Gorilla is because sometimes people do that, which is totally fine, but they'll go through and just kind of highlight. Oh, okay, we need this. We need a pencil. I can see that, or we need, you know, uh, you can see here Mercedes is, is is highlighted or whatever. But there's so many other things that um, need to be tagged that are not visibly seen in the screenplay. Okay. Um, obviously, if they if if the screenplay writer uh, the screenwriter writes uh, you know dinner scene uh, and you know five people sit around a dinner uh, table and eat dinner, well that's all the writer's going to write. You know, the writer is not going to say they're eating you know um, uh, roast beef and mashed potatoes and peas and we have silverware and and cups and glasses and napkins and uh, candelabra and all that kind of thing. Writer's not going to put that in, and that's not his job or her job to do that. It's the job of whoever's breaking down the script in conjunction with, of course, the producer, the director, the writer to say, what are we eating? You know, the writer might not even put down what they're eating because it's not part of what he or she is uh, important in the scene. But of course, it is important in production, right? So that's where breaking down the script really comes in, in handy. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that real quick. So we do have a, a new feature in Gorilla 7 called on-screen tagging. So what you can do is literally just highlight a word. And uh, I've already done this scene. So let me just, uh, I know this doesn't make any sense, but I'll highlight sidewalks. Of course, you know, really tag sidewalks. But let's just do that for, for, for uh, example's sake. And then hit the space bar. And then you can go up and set, let's say that's set dressing, and click tag. And that's going to now tag the word sidewalks. You can see it's highlighted in green because that's the set dressing color. And up here, you'll see scheduled elements for scene one. You'll see sidewalks is entered as a scheduled element. OK, now the nice thing about that is if uh, it's such a bad example, let's use salt shaker <laughs> because sidewalks is not a good example. So let's say salt shaker because it's a dinner table, right? Let's say that. So and the nice thing about that is salt shaker is, is created here also. Um, you can now use, since salt shaker is an element that we added to this scene, you can now add it to other scenes very simply. So if I wanted to go here on the right hand side and let's say go to scene six, for example, now I know I'm not making sense in terms of what really is in the scene, but I'm just doing an example. And uh, Salt Shaker, I think, was in the set dressing, right? So was it? Uh, yeah, here it is. So Salt, so go ahead and click it. Because I've already created it for scene one, I don't have to create it again for scene six. I literally just select it from the list of available elements, OK? And now that you can see, it's checkmarked here. And uh, here in the scene, you can see Salt Shaker is now added to this particular scene. So there's another way to add. Uh, elements, and that is the reverse way. And that's really, really nice. So let's say, and again, salt shaker, I'm, I'm getting really bad examples, but let's just use it because I'm we're in it right now and salt is in, in my head. So let's say, for example, we know that salt shaker needs to be in three other scenes. Well, I can certainly go to those other scenes, like scene 12, scene 13, scene whatever, and add it. But another way to do it is adding the scene or scenes to the element. OK, and let me show you how to do that. So you go into the little three dots here, the more button, right? Go ahead, the info button for salt shaker. And here, of course, we're in the now we're in the detail of the element salt shaker. Now here, of course, we can add a picture if you want of it, um, a description of it, very specific. Um, you can go ahead and enter uh, information about 
um, uh, the, uh, I'm sorry, the contact, like if you need a contact for this element, if it's a gun, you know, who's the prop master is, that kind of thing. But there's a tab here, if you could see, called scenes. And this is very helpful. Now notice, remember I, we showed that was it was already in scene one, so that's there. I just added it to scene six. Let's go ahead, add it to a couple more scenes. I could just click here, and now I can literally go and say, I want to add it to scene 12, and I want to add it to scene 13. So without actually going to the scene on the breakdown sheet screen, I now added salt shaker to two more scenes right from that particular element. So that's a really nice, helpful thing you can do. And of course, if I go to scene 12 here on the right-hand side, you're going to see salt shaker is added to the scene. Okay, so that's the, the concept of breaking down a script, scheduling elements. Now, of course, you can, I, I, I did that with set dressing, you could do that with props, you can do that, of course, with any one of these categories here, of, including, of course, cast members. Now, cast members are usually entered or, or imported from the screenplay. Now, the way that works is that if a cast member uh, in a scene has dialogue, okay, let me go back to final draft real quick. And you're going to see now here, here's a, here's a really good example. Scene one, which is a short scene here, it's just sort of a, a uh, I'm sorry, I'm in tags mode here. Let me get out of tags mode. Okay. Scene one, which is sort of just a, um, uh, a, a you know, a, a visual scene, sort of an exterior shot, right? Uh, doesn't have any, any cast members in the scene. It might have extras in the street or what have you, but it certainly doesn't have any main cast members in the scene because you can't see any. There's no dialogue which means that when I import scene one into Gorilla, no cast member is going to be attached to it, even if that cast member is in the, in the description. So if, for example, now I don't want to modify this, but if I were to enter, for example, Barney, right, who's the name of a, a main character, uh, walks down the street. Okay, done. Now, if I import, if I go back now and re-import this entire screenplay, Barney, who is a main character, right? And we could see that by, if we scroll down, there's here we go, Barney has some dialogue in scene four, right? Scene four. However, right now in scene one, if I import this screenplay into Gorilla, Barney will not be attached to scene one. Why? Because what Gorilla does, and most, soft, most scheduling software does, it goes through the scene and sees if that character has dialogue. If that character has dialogue, ah, it says, okay, that's a character. Let's bring in this, the, the character of the cast member for that particular scene. So that's where tagging would come in into Gorilla. So you would go into Gorilla. Now I, I modified this. I probably added Barney to scene one already. But if I went to scene one, I have a feeling he's already here. He is, but he's only here because I did that, okay? I went in and, and went to scene one and said, attach Barney to scene one, okay? It was not imported that way from the screenplay. So that's why it's even though it's really nice to imp, to tag in Final Draft, it really gives you a head start in terms of tagging. It really is the just the beginning because when you get into the scheduling, you really need to get deep into the scene and figure out what it is that you need for that particular scene because the writer might not have put it into into the description. Okay, um, any questions about tagging or breaking down a script? Because um, I'm going to move on to the to the next section. And again, I'm just going to keep on going. So please feel free if you have a question to chat it in, because I'm I'll just stop for a minute for a second or two and just ask if there are any questions. If they're not, I'm just going to move on. Okay. So the next thing that uh, I'm going to show you is um, which is the next step, basically. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show you sort of the order of things. So obviously we start with the screenplay, and then we go into now the screenplay is imported and we then break down the screenplay. And then you're just worried about scenes. You're just literally going through scene by scene by scene and say, okay, what's in scene 10? What's in scene 11? What's in scene 12? And adding these elements to that scene, okay? So the next thing, the next thing you wanna do is basically start your, create your shoot days or your calendar. Now, a lot of times you might be doing this a year out, six months out, who knows? But in any case, in order to, to start scheduling, you still need a calendar. And of course you can modify those dates later, but Gorilla does need a criteria set of days, okay? So if you click the shoot days button, now I've already done this because this is a sample schedule. Um, I've created some days here, uh, and this is a short film, a short shoot, for example, it's just uh, 10 days here, as you can see. And um, each day 
uh, can be uh, uh, scheduled on the board. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. So we create your days and you also create what's called off days because a lot of times, of course, you're not going to shoot 10 days straight. There'll be some off days to give the crew or the cast a rest. Sometimes it's weekends, sometimes it's not weekends. In this particular day, the red line is indicating an off day. So in this particular uh, calendar, the fifth and the sixth are off days. The blue line here, I think that's a travel day, if I'm not mistaken. And then this is a red line. This is an off day. We've tagged it as a meeting day, but we've tagged it as an off day, okay? So once you create your days, right? And to, to do that, you literally just, you could just click on a day and, you know, say, do you want to add this day uh, uh, to the calendar? Um, you then want to do what's called a strip board. And the strip board is really important because what that does is it marries your shoot days and your scenes, okay? Because we have our shoot days, as you can see, right? And we have our scenes, but we have no idea, even though we have the, the scenes um, broken down in terms of what element is to be needed on the, scene, on the scene. We don't know what day it's needed, okay? We have the days, we have the scenes, and we need to marry them, and that where the, that's where the strip board comes in. And of course, you really can't do the board until you've pretty much done the scenes. You gotta know at the very least what actors are needed for that uh, scene, right? And you need to know your days. So let's go ahead and do that. So these, this is my calendar, I'm gonna close that out. And here there's a button called strip board. Now again, remember I told you that the breakdown sheet screen is sort of the main screen for scheduling? Up here on the top, this toolbar can take you anywhere into the schedule, okay? So we're just in schedule, we're not in budgeting, we're in schedule. So let's go ahead and click the strip board button. Now, of course, I've got a strip board here, but I'm gonna explain this to you. Now, what a strip board is, like I said, is it is a combination of your scenes and your days. And the way, the why it's called a strip board, and I'm going back into the old days of Hollywood, the olden days, is that they used to have a, uh, the way they used to schedule is they would have these long, little, literally cardboard strips and each strip, and they had to be cut out, you know, each strip uh, uh, represented a scene and they were colored, okay, they were colored. Uh, and there were only like four colors. I think it was just day, night, uh, you know, interior, exterior, day, night, that kind of thing. Um, we've added, you know, lots of colors, you know, twilight, and midnight, and sunrise uh, to make it fun. But um, these strips were then put on a board with these black strips that were sort of divider strips that were basically your shoot days. Okay, uh, will this be available on demand? Yes, it will be. Uh, we, we're gonna be recording this. We are recording this, it will be uh, available. So these black strips were then um, uh, the day breaks, right? And then the uh, colored strips were the, were the actual scenes. And so what you, you, you would do, the, uh, the UPM, I think usually, would then uh, kind of arrange them and they'd literally lift the strip and, and okay, let's put this there. And it was a very kind of, very large thing. It would take up a whole table and you'd have 100 or 200 strips or so. And that was the old way to do it. And then you'd, they, they would have this big board and they would bring it to the set and they'd open it up. It would be a tricolor, tri uh, cardboard kind of thing. So anyway, that's where the strip board comes from. This is the same concept. Okay. So if you can see here under day one, which is a black strip, that's one of our first, that is our first shoot day. Above scene one, now I, this is really just simple. It's just, we're shooting this in numerical order, which doesn't make sense normally, but again, it's just a sample. Scene one and scene two is being shot on day one, okay? And how we did that is we literally just, it starts off by all the, the black strips are in the end and we just drag and drop. So for example, if I wanted scene three right here to be shot on day one, I would literally just drag it right up above the black strip and now, Scene three is scheduled on day one. Okay, that's all there is to it. Now here on the right, on the sort of right hand side, but over here where my mouse is kind of doing this, you can see these numbers here, and this is very helpful because what these numbers are these these are called board IDs. Each number represents a character or a cast member, so you can see what cast member is needed for what day because that's important because you want to be able to schedule you know, all the, maybe, maybe uh, you know, all of Barney's scenes sort of kind of together or, or, or Amanda, whatever the character's names are. And here on the left-hand side, you could see our legend, okay? So Barney is one and Amanda is two and Chubby is three. And they come in that way. Uh, normally the, the, uh, the numerical uh, representation of the IDs 
come in based on how many scenes they're in. So in other words, Barney has the most scenes that he's in, again, based on dialogue. Uh, therefore, he is one, Amanda's the next, Chubby, and it goes down that way. You can manually change those numbers if you want, but for the most part, that's how IDs work. So I can see here, oh, okay, I need one here, I need seven here, and I, and you know what, I nine, whoever nine is, let's say janitor assistant, well, you know what, this guy's only available on day one, okay? So I know that, so I can move that up to day one. So that's basically how you schedule your board, and once you're done with this part of it, you can then go on to the next part. Now, there's a lot of things you can do on the board. I'm not going to go over that in this intro class, but we do have, I think, three or four or five lessons just on the board. You can see all these different buttons here. Each one has a different function. Um, in fact, if you go to the extras pull down menu on the top, training videos, scheduling, and this will show you, check out this right, strip board, uh, creating your first, strip board, auto creating. Stripboard customizing, stripboard adding banners, stripboard second phase, stripboard printing. I've got six six videos, and each each one is three, four, five minutes long. So easily 30, 40 minutes just on stripboard functionality. So there's a lot to learn about stripboards, and you can, like I said, you can add a banner. A banner is sort of a uh, um, a text in the middle of the board. Let's say lunchtime or whatever. So you could do a lot of things here. You could actually do multiple boards. A lot of times, you know, you're doing the schedule and you're like, well, you know, I don't know about this character or that character. We might have to go to this location first. We don't know. We might only have it for the first week of the shoot. It might only be available the second week. So you could do different different boards based on different different schedules. And you can literally call that. Now, I call it just board one, board two, board three. But you can literally say, you know, uh, location one or location two or whatever and create a different board and only one is what's called the default board so at the very end you're going to say okay this is our default board this is the one that all the reports are going to be based on the, the shooting schedule report the call sheets that kind of thing um, but you could literally have multiple boards saved for the same schedule okay so a lot of things you could do with the board we added a lot of new features in the board in gorilla 7 a lot things like um uh, deleting multiple strips, you can now, okay, I have to I have modify the board. So let me go ahead and save it real quick. Uh, that's another thing. When you do the board, you want to save it uh, because you could, like I said, you could save multiple boards, right? So let's, if I go back into uh, delete multiple strips, this is just another new feature that we added. You can now literally delete multiple strips at the same time you, you, before you have to do one at a time, but lots and lots of new features like that. So are there any questions about the board or how the board works? or the function of the board. Otherwise, I'll move on to the, uh, to the next section. All right, let's move on. So um, since we're on the board real quick, let me show you if you wanted to print the board and you could print a lot of things in Gorilla. I'm just gonna show you that throughout the, uh, throughout the, uh, the class here, but there's a, a little print button here and you can actually export the board too. Exporting means get the data out into sort of an Excel sort of uh, 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 thing. But if you wanted to print the board, you can just go ahead and select the board that you wanna print. And this will give you a preview of what that board's gonna look like. And then you could save it to PDF right there or print it. Okay, and there are different ways to print it. You could print it um, thin strips. You could print it thick strips. Uh, you could print it, I think, with a, uh, uh, the legal, legal uh, paper if you wanted to, you know, the US legal, which is longer. So you have more information there. Okay, so that's the board. So once, okay, so once the screenplay is imported and once the breakdown sheets are broken down and once the shoot days are created and once the board is done, now you can get into sort of a little more of the um, uh, detail of, of the schedule. Now, not that the breaking down the script is not detail, but you've done the basics of you can actually run a call sheet report now, okay? Since you have the strip board done, you could run a call shoot report or a shooting schedule report. And I'll show you really quickly how to do that down here on the bottom. There's a quick print. And now these are just some of the um, reports you can print. There are more, you could see more reports right here, but let's say I wanna uh, select a shooting schedule report, which is a really, really nice report. This is a very uh, um, unique report to Gorilla. I haven't seen this in any other scheduling program, but if you wanted to print a report like this, you could literally do this and I'll show you what that looks like. 
And what that shows you, it shows you the, uh, the day, the scene number, the information for the scene at the header, and all the elements needed for that particular scene. Um, another nice thing is the, uh, let me go down here again, and um, the call sheet, of course. You could always put in a call sheet, and I'm going to go over that in a minute. So you don't, hold on, let me let me go to the call sheet section because that's the next section I'm going to. Okay, but those are where you could preview a lot of these reports before you actually print them. So let's go to the call sheet area. So once that you've done that, now let's go into to setting up call times. Okay, and what a call time is, we're going to go back to the calendar and let's go to the first day by clicking on it. So now we're going into the detail of the first day. So you just keep on digging down deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into the detail. Okay, so now that you see, notice these little windows, you can see you got your breakdown sheet there, which is still open, your shoot days, your calendar there, and then your, your shoot day details. So we're on day one right here. If you wanted to go to day two, you could do that here, but let's stay on day one, right? So, um, oh, sorry, it's redoing it again. There we go. All right, so now that we're on day one, there's a lot of stuff here uh, because you could, you could enter a lot of information for your day. First thing and foremost thing is the call time, okay? So the main call time is right here, 6 a.m. You could change that if you want, but by default, all shoot days start at 6 a.m. You could change it to 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. or what have you. And then you can literally go through now the cast call times here. Then this second tab is showing you all the cast that's needed for day one. Now, again, that's why it was so important to do the strip board first, okay? Because the strip board um, will dictate it will force you to to uh, to put the the cast members on the day on the scenes, and then of course you'll see the day at the end, and it will calculate. Okay, so you need uh, cast number one, two, three, seven, nine, and one hundred one on day one. So Gorilla already knows that these are the what is it, six characters, six characters or cast members that you need on day one. So being that uh, already solidified because you did the board. You can then go into the individual call times, okay, and pop that in. So, for example, let's say we need Barney to be on the set at seven, and his makeup time is six. So you can do this with with every single cast member. Notice the main call time is six. That's for the crew, okay. The main call time for the crew is six, but for uh, Barney or Sean as the actor, he needs to be uh, six a.m. in makeup, and seven a.m. he needs to be uh, on set. OK, and you could do this for every single cast member here and then go through the day two, day three, day four. You could put notes here if you want. This will appear on the call sheet. OK, um, and then a label for the calendar right over here. So if I wanted to print the call sheet, is this call sheet function you're talking about now? Call sheet? Oh, OK, good question. This is part of Gorilla's call sheet. OK, um, this is not Koala call sheets. Koala call sheets is a uh, separate program that um, if you wanted to purchase, you can. You could also do, purchase as a standalone product, so it doesn't have to work with Gorilla. And it's literally just a call sheet program. It gives you a lot more options for call sheets. Um, there's like 20 some odd templates you could choose from. A lot more, a lot more uh, functionality there. But this is Gorilla's call sheet uh, um, uh, locally in Gorilla. You don't need Koala call sheets for this. This is in Gorilla. And I'll show you what the call sheet looks like. Yeah. So if I click this little print button here and click call sheet, it's going to generate a call sheet for us for this day. And as you can see here, you've got your call time, you've got your weather information, your uh, uh, main crew information here, your first shot, wrap, breakfast, that kind of thing. The uh, scenes that are going to be shot on this day. Okay, that's right here. The cast needed, right? The elements needed. Now you can turn that. I think you could turn that off so you don't have to print the elements because sometimes call sheets don't uh, don't have elements in it because it takes a lot. Let's say you have hundred elements. You don't want to see that on a call sheet necessarily. Um, and yeah, see, there's a lot there. And then the last page here are the meals, parking, hospital, and the notes. Right. So there's a lot of information here. So you can customize the call sheet here. If I were to go to, let's see, I think we can go over here. And this is where the main reporting is. If I click on production reports and call sheet, notice there's a gear button next to some of the reports, not all, but a lot of them. It's called the preferences button. So if I click that, this is this shows you all the options that you could turn on or off for that uh, for that report. Okay. Um, 
So as a weather question here, I'll get to the, that in a second. So um, if you wanted to uh, print breakfast time, you could do that. If you don't want to, you could just click X for, for no. So the weather, let me go into the weather uh, right over here. Here's the weather. Um, so the weather information is not hooked into a weather service online, but what you can do is you can put in a, I mean, I mean, sort of is, I mean, well, maybe it is just not, it doesn't pull it automatically, but what you can do is you could put in a URL for a weather online service. Like I just put in weather bug. I think that's the default that comes in. Right. And, um, uh, then because based on the location, I think it's based on the location for the day. I think I have to look that up. It's a very good question, but we do have that information here. And then what you can do here is, is you have 75 degrees that's for the day. And you could actually put in whatever you want to put in. So there's a little bit of man and sunrise sunset. There's a little bit of manual entry here. It doesn't pull it in automatically because based on the location that you're going to be shooting. And of course, how many days out could be three weeks out could be four weeks out doesn't know that necessarily. So there is a little bit of assistance here with the weather um, that you can uh, that you can do and you can put in whatever URL here you want. And then when you go to this tab, it will basically pop in that URL uh, on and you're basically looking at a web view right here. This is this is, an, you know, if you go to the web and type that in, that's what you're going to see. And then you can literally see, oh, okay, 75 degrees. And here's some more sunrise. Here we go. Sunrise, sunset. Perfect. And you could just pop that in. Okay. So, but that's on this tab here, weather and sunrise. Okay. So more things on the call sheet is meals and shots. So um, uh, you could put in the meals and shots here. The nice thing, we have this thing called smart call times. And what smart call, smart call times allows you to do if it's that, if that's checked is if the main call time up here is changed, if you change that, it will modify, every, it'll filter through and push everything uh, forward or backward um, uh, a half an hour or back an hour or something like that. So notice that our main call time here is six and breakfast is 5.30. So it's a half an hour before the main call time, right? If I were to change this to, uh, let's see, 10 a.m., right? What happens is since I have smart call times checked, what it does is it changes breakfast to 9.30. So it's a half an hour back. It changes the first shot to um uh, you know, uh, whatever, I think it's, I guess it's one hour or, or for, uh, I have to look and see how this is. This is probably not set up right. There's ways you can ch change it so that, so that you, you specify if it's an hour ahead or an hour, I've been playing with this. So that's why these are a little bit off, but you can literally uh, customize how, if it's an hour ahead or two hours, but, but, but all based on the call time, because the call time is the main call time, the main time. Okay. Uh, parking and hospital information goes here. This is all stuff that you put on the call sheet, right? Um, okay, the next thing is crew call times. Now, crew call times, as opposed to uh, cast call times, which are dictated by the board, right? Remember, we went to the board and we had day one and we know that Barney, Amanda, and, and all those characters, all those actors need to be scheduled for that day because they're, they're, on, they're on the scene. So obviously, Gorilla knows that, right? But the crew is a completely different story. Crew are not on scenes, okay? You don't schedule crew for a scene. It just doesn't, you, you schedule crew for a day, okay? So that's also very important to understand. You can schedule a scene and you can schedule a day. So what we're doing when we go into crew is we need to schedule crew for the day, okay? So let me show you how that's done. Let me go to a day that, is probably no crew. Let me see, maybe this one. And okay, perfect. So the second day, I don't have any crew scheduled for this particular day. Okay, as you can see, there's no crew here. We're in the crew call times tab. If I click on cast call times, we do have a cast scheduled that's based on the board. But if I click on the crew call times, there's nobody there. And we, as the whoever's doing the schedule, needs to schedule the crew for the day. So let's go ahead and do that. There's a couple ways to do that, okay? Um, first thing is you click on this plus button here and it's gonna bring up a list of all your crew. Now this is, I'm gonna show you where to do that, where to go to the crew module, which is up here. You can see that little tab right over there. That's where you go to enter your crew. But right now notice that everything is X'd out because I don't have any crew scheduled for the day. So let's say we need the director. 
Um, and let's say we need the uh, DP, and you can go through all, all these ones, and let's say we need the gaffer. And of course, now you can see the little green check marks here, and you can see them popping up on the list on the left-hand side. So this is how you schedule crew for the day, right? And now you can actually go through just like the cast, once they're entered, is you can go around the call times over here and modify the call time for that specific crew member. Now, the main call time is still 6 a.m. That doesn't change, right? But I can go in and say, well, you know, the director doesn't have to be there at six because, you know, he, he could come in there at 7.30 because the first shot might be at eight o'clock or something like that. So you can change that. And we added a new feature called OC here, which is on call. So for example, I mean, we probably need all these three for the day, but let's say we have a, a second assistant or something like that. And we don't necessarily know if we need that particular crew member for the day. You can click OC and that'll put on the call sheet on call. So you send the call sheet to that particular person. They know, oh, I'm on call. Okay, so I can't go very far because they might call me at any second to come onto the set, okay? Another way to add crew is to do the select all. And this, because remember I was doing individually, but let's say you go through each through the day, ah, I need everybody, there's 30 crew members. I have to sit there and click one at a time. No, you can click add all. And this will add all the crew members that you have scheduled as all the, I'm not scheduled, all the crew members that you have created for, uh, for the schedule for that day. So let me show you now, I'm gonna go a little bit backwards, okay? And show you now, I'm, I'm just, if you could see these, these uh, tool, the, uh, the toolbar, the buttons up here, we went through shoot days and strip board and uh, I didn't go through elements, I'm gonna go through that. But actors and crew are right here. So the nice thing about Gorilla is it's not just typical scheduling because if you go to other programs, it's just scenes, shoot days, strip board, and that's it. But in Gorilla, we went a step uh, further and we added actors and, and crew because that's incredibly important, right? So let's go into the actors tab and I don't need to save right now. Let's go to the actors tab. So this is now going to show me all my cast for my schedule. So very important to understand the difference here between cast member and uh, well, it, it's it's really not the greatest term in my opinion, but that's that's what that's that's the industry. So I'm going based on industry standards. Okay, I'm going to use character as opposed to cast member because when you think of cast, you think of, of a person playing the role, right? You don't think of a character. So I'll use the word role played. Okay, so the role played here is Sophia, Amanda, Barney, da da da, and all of these role roles or characters were imported from the screenplay, okay? So when I first imported the screenplay, this uh, column was empty, but this column, well, that's not true. They were both empty. But what we've done here in the cast module is we've married, again, just like we do in the scene in the uh, strip board, is we marry the shoot days and the scenes. This in the, in the cast, what we're doing is we're marrying these two together, the actors and the characters. So let's go ahead just to show you how this works. So Amanda, is a character. And what I do is I go into the character and right here, uh, Christine is the actor playing Amanda, okay? And you could go ahead and attach a role to a particular actor. So actors have to be entered by whoever's doing the schedule, okay? Whoever's doing the schedule needs to go in and, and type in or enter all the actors. You can actually import the actors if you want to. If you have a, um, a uh, Excel spreadsheet, for example, and someone gave you all the actors in an, Excel, in an Excel list, you could do that. Or you could actually import actors from another schedule. So if you're doing a series, for example, series one, series two, series three, and you have the same actors used in another schedule, as opposed to recreating them all, you could literally say import actors from another schedule, select that particular schedule, and there they'll, they'll be imported. You don't have to create them again. Really a great time saver. So in the actors, let's go into the detail here for uh, this one. Okay, this is a different actor. So uh, Jennifer Paris is the name of the actor. She's playing the role of Eve, okay? That's very clear. Um, notice that it says total days worked is two. This is based on what's called the data days report, which is also a very important report in, in scheduling. Again, based on the board, because the board tells you how many days an actor needs to work. That's why the board is so important to do. A lot of people will call up and say, hey, my, this call sheet doesn't work. And you know, uh, uh, this, is, this report is wrong. Uh, how can I not? Well, you haven't done your board. You have, the first question that we ask is, have you done your board? Oh, no, I was going to do that later. Well, you got to do your board. 
you got to do your board before you actually start scheduling um, uh, and running reports. Okay, so down here, and I'm going to show you how this uh, relates to budgeting, is if you wanted to, and this is not ne uh, necessary, you can enter weekly rates and daily rates and hourly rates if you want for that particular actor. Again, don't have to do it. A lot of times if you're doing SAG films, it's not going to be, you're not going to enter that. You're going to get that from SAG, but you can do that here if you want. Uh, if you click on the contact info tab, you could enter contact info for that, for that actor, which is very important, right? Um, and uh, that's, this is actually very important too. We uh, uh, statistics important for the wardrobe department, for the costume department. You want to know, you know, uh, what's the height, what's the weight, you know, eye color, this kind of thing. So you, you know, what's the shirt size? All this kind of stuff for the wardrobe is very important. You want to get that information in here so that um, you can get that information to the uh, the costumer, right? Okay, so that's actors and cast. So next one would be crew. Very similar. Um, it is the, the difference between, of course, actors and crew is that uh, the, the roles are imported from, from the screenplay normally, but crew, again, they're not, okay? They're not. So when you go ahead and create crew, also, similarly, just like the actors, if you wanted to, you could import crew from another schedule. This is really important because what you can do, sometimes you're, you're going to reuse the crew from one schedule to another. Oh, we're going to use the same DP, the same gaffer, the same you know, lighting technician. Well, if the schedule's already been created, and you could see here on the right-hand side, 915, that's telling you how many crew members are attached to that schedule. So we can click on time travel. These are different schedules loaded in Gorilla, and you will import those crew members, and, and it'll come in with all their info. It's not just the names, right? It'll come in with their title, right, and their contact info, okay? So once they're in, you can then, let's go into... Uh, DP. Okay, let's so go in here and go into the DP, go into the info for that. So now into the detail. Can the crew be imported from Excel? Yeah. Yeah. In fact, good question. Uh, import crew right here from Excel. This was modified and enhanced greatly in Gorilla 7. Before, and I notice you could see that you're like, whoa, what is that? That's an Excel spreadsheet uh, legend. Before, it was only the first name and the last name, okay, that you could import. I don't think anything else could be imported. But now, if someone creates an Excel spreadsheet, let's say someone else in the in the crew, if they format it this way, so you want to be able to base whoever's doing it, you want to give them this little legend here. If they format it this way, and you could see down here, first name, last name, address, even even title and department. Okay, this will all import. Okay, and if there is a um, a title or a department that doesn't exist in Gorilla, which is very possible, right? Like, I, mean, I don't think we have COVID specialists, you know, that's a lot of people are doing that. Um, uh, you know, uh, but it's here in the Excel file, it will create that in Gorilla, okay? So yes, you can import from, from a, an Excel spreadsheet. Good question. So let's go into, uh, where was I? DP, right? Okay, we're going to the DP, going to the info. So very similar to the uh, uh, actor's uh, detail record, you can go through now, and uh, here's the name, of course, title. So this is, of course, not, you're not going to see this in the actor's uh, section, but you can select here. Now, these are all preset titles that we have, and then we have, I think, 99 or something ridiculous like that. And there's more. There, there are more. We can't get all of them. And they're automatically attached to the department. So no, I noticed that I can't see, I can't modify the department because a title is attached to a department. So um, it doesn't allow you to put the DP in the makeup department, okay? You just can't do that. Um, if you wanted to force it, you can do that. And, and you know, you could certainly do that by going into, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, where is it? Um, uh, departments, I think it's up here somewhere. Let's see, manage crew departments. Ah, there we go. Manage crew titles and departments. So this is where you manage them. And you can see that in this database, uh, you've got your production department. Notice on the left is department and on the right is title. Okay. So you have a department and then those attached. So in the production department, you've got director, producer, and this is all very standard. If I click camera department, in the camera department, You've got the DP, the camera operator, first camera assistant, steady cam operator, et cetera, the electric gaffer, et cetera, right? 
if I go down to wardrobe, you've got wardrobe people, go down to makeup, you've got makeup people. So this is where you can modify and add crew departments and titles if you don't see one in Gorilla that you can use, okay? Like I said, I think there's, you know, some health things in here that we didn't put in uh, and such, but you could do that. See, there's a little plus sign here and a plus sign here. So you can add a crew department if you want uh, and a title or delete them. You know, if you want to do that, you can do that too. Okay, so let's go back here real quick to the uh, title, I'm um, to the uh, crew member. So, um, oh, this is another thing that we, that we uh, that's really nice is additional positions. So a lot of times, um, more, no, mostly on low budget films, you're gonna have a, a person who might have more than one title, okay? They might be the DP, but they might also be the camera operator, right? They might have to be the same person doing, doing that, the director of lighting and operating the camera. Um, so what you can do additional positions, you can literally click this button and add camera operator, right? So, and, and nice thing about it is you can schedule them differently. So this is really, really, really cool. You can literally, because when you schedule a crew member for a day, you're not scheduling the person, you're scheduling the title, okay? Let me say that again. When you go and, and schedule, you're not scheduling the person, you're scheduling the title. But of course, the title is attached to a person, okay? So that means I literally can go in and say, day, on day XYZ, I want the DP. But on day ABC, I want the camera operator, who's the same person but I schedule the title as opposed to the person. I hope that makes sense. Also, very similarly to the crew uh, actors, I'm sorry, you can add rates. So if I go in here and I say, let's say the weekly rate is gonna be 2,200 for the DP, right? Now that doesn't, honestly, that doesn't mean anything. Once, when I enter this number in here, it means I could put in a million dollars. It doesn't matter. It's not gonna do anything until I um, do the budget. Okay, and that's, we're gonna to get to that in just a minute. I'm running a little bit over because I wanna get into the budgeting module. So let me wrap this up. Um, shoot dates. This is, now remember we, I showed you in the call time detail, we were in the shoot date detail and I clicked that little plus sign and I added um, crew members to the day. You remember that? This is the same thing, but backwards. Just like I showed you how do you could attach an element to a scene and then you could attach a scene to an element, same thing. So I can literally go here and click this plus sign and Andrew, who's the DP, I can literally say he needs to be on day one, day two, day three, day four, et cetera, and do it from this screen also, and it'll show up on the other screen. So the nice thing about Gorilla, there's so many different ways to do the same thing, and you don't have to conform to one way or another. We just give you the option of saying, you know what, you're on the crew member, why not add the shoot days here, as opposed to only doing going to the shoot day and adding the crew member to the shoot day. Okay, so that is a breakdown, a little bit of a breakdown on actors and crew. The last thing I'm gonna do is elements before I move on to the budget, okay? I'm not gonna get into everything, everything in the schedule, but I'm at least gonna show you elements because that's important. So what are elements? Now I did go through this in the beginning. Elements are items that you need to schedule for the scene and they can be pretty much anything. Okay, including cast members. All right. So most of the stuff here was imported from the tagged screenplay. Now, if I don't tag my screenplay and uh, I go to elements, all I'm going to see most likely are cast uh, actor, uh, not actors, cast members, characters, right? Because they are in, they have dialogue in the screenplay. And I just went over here to notice what I did. I went to filter and I said, I just want to see my cast members. If I want to just see my props, I could do that. And I'm just showing you uh, filtering down here to see my props. Same thing with costumes, et cetera, right? And you can add things here if you want to. Now, remember over here, we were on the breakdown sheet and I went to, did I add one here? I don't even know if I did. Let's go to costumes, for example. I don't know if I did this, but if I go to costumes, these this list of, of uh, costumes was imported from the screenplay. Okay, from the tag screenplay. But let's say, like I said, remember I did the highlighting, the tagging, right? But let's say I have a costume. Oh, we need, we need a, a pink scarf. Damn, it wasn't in the, it wasn't in the screenplay. So you click on the plus sign here, pink scarf, because we're in the costume uh, uh, area. Click that, and notice there's a little check, a green check mark here. Close that uh, up here, and if we go to 
uh, there we go, pink scarf is now scheduled for scene one. Now notice, of course, it's not highlighted in the display. Well, it can't be because there was no um, description written for pink scarf, okay? And again, most of your elements that you schedule are not going to be highlighted. So that's why when, when Final Draft introduced, in my opinion, the, um, and go back to the tagging mode here, tagging mode, nice feature, really nice, but it's limiting because, you know, you, you can tag stuff in here, but not, you, you can't, what about things that you can't see? You know, I think there's an option here to to locate elements that aren't in the screenplay, and but you're you're getting into this. It's like they're they're creeping over into into part of scheduling, uh, as opposed to just staying in scheduling, which is fine. Nothing about nothing wrong about that. But we take it to the next level. We have so many other features in breaking down the script and scheduling, uh, you know, as opposed to just tagging what's on the screen. Okay, so let me go back here to elements now that I. Uh, so for example, oh, okay, so I added, let me do a show all here. So I'm back into showing everything. And let me go back into costumes again and refresh the screen. And notice if you can see on the very bottom, pink scarf is here. Because I added it, even though I added it in the breakdown sheet screen, it's still an element now that has been created and can be used over and over again in a different scene. So let's say it's attached to Amanda, okay. We, every time we see Amanda, she's got a pink scarf because that's her. That's her. That's her thing. You know, that's her character trait. Can you input? Oh, I got a question here. Can you input crew availability for different positions, and Gorilla will identify conflicts, or do you have, or or do you have to have this separately? Import. I'm sorry. Import. Input crew availability. Um, you're talking about something called blackouts. I think I'm not going over that in this intro class, but yes. There is an, uh, a feature called blackout dates, and it's a little bit more of an advanced feature. That's why I don't go over it here. And I'll just really quickly show you where that is. So if I go into, I think that's what you're asking. Um, and there's another question there. I'll get you in that question in a minute. Um, info, uh, blackout. So if you go into so Clint Edwards and you click on the little plus button and enter a date that he or she is not available, um, uh, then um, you will you will see that 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 act, uh, actor you can do it for actors too okay and elements elements you could do that too but uh, you can certainly do it for crew so I think that's what you're asking we do have a video on that so if I go into just to show you I believe we have a video on that uh, let's see the world got training videos scheduling I think I hope um, let's see let's see blackout dates right there. Blackout is how to set up blackout, blackout dates for crew elements and scenes. You can even do scenes, okay? So I think that's what you're asking. Let me go to the next question here. Uh, you can easily add elements not mentioned in the script in Final Draft if I do import in Gorilla 7. Um, yes, yeah, like I, uh, correct. If you do that, uh, yeah, you can go in, like I said, you can do that in Final Draft. You can go in here and there's an option. I think if you go to Scene Navigator or whatever, you can add elements that are not in the screenplay. Yes, those will be imported too. In fact, um, if you look, this was imported. Notice that, um, let's see, let's see. Was it Canberra Lingers? No, that was already there. Um, I thought I created one that was in the, uh, in here that was not highlighted, but was tagged. But yes, those, those, those uh, elements are still coming into Gorilla. Even if they're not highlighted in Final Draft, they will come in and be attached to the category. So yes. Okay. Um... All right, back to elements. I think I'm almost done with elements. Let me see if there's anything else I want to show you here. Oh, but the nice thing about elements, and let me show you, um, let me just filter the props just to get this scene a little bit nice, uh, cleaner. So let's say, okay, so let's say, um, all right, sorry, huge faticus, but just because it has a little, a little uh, info, a little um, picture here. So if I go to the detail of this particular element, you could put it, of course, a picture for it if you want. Um, which is nice for the costume person, for the prop master, whatever. Um, here is where you can put very detailed description. A lot of times when you put, uh, when, you're, when you're breaking down, let's say a, a, a character A picks up a pen, okay? Um, and it just says pen in the screenplay. Well, this is done in the 18th century and it's a fountain pen with the plume purple feather, right? Well, you're not gonna write that all in necessarily in the screenplay. I mean, you might, but this is where you could go in and go into the detail and say, 
this fat of gazpacho is made, the da 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 has this. You can very go into detail about it because a lot of times when the prop master, the set designer, they need detail. And of course, they go on, on on their own and they'll create stuff on their own. The art department will figure it all out. But the more de detail you give them, the more, of course, uh, detailed the, the, the prop or whatever it is will be. So you could put in description here if you want. Again, you could go to the scene for the element like I showed you before and say, I want to add this to a whole bunch of scenes right here. There's an also tagged as. This is a, a really cool advanced feature. I'm not going to go over, but this allows you to tag um, the prop um, as a different name. Okay. So for example, if you have uh, a character that says uh, Barney, da, 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 he has a, uh, he's wearing a food spatter t-shirt and you highlights food spatter t-shirt. And then in the next scene or scene five or two scenes later, uh, Barney, um, you know, walks down the hall in his filthy shirt. Well, the filthy shirt is the same shirt as food spatter t-shirt in scene one, but it's a different name. So you can literally take those, the second one and tag it as the first one. So it doesn't create a new element. It just appends it and adds it as another um, name for that element. So that's a really nice feature that we added. Linking elements, very important. I'm not gonna go over it again. I keep on saying I'm not gonna go over it and I do, but linking elements, we do have a video on that. <clears throat> what that allows you to do is you can link elements together, okay? So let's say you have a man um, that's always uh, wearing a top hat and a cane, okay? The Monopoly man or whatever. Um, Every single scene, you, he always has the top hat and cane. Well, instead of every single time going through and saying, oh, he needs the cane, he needs the hat, da, 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 you could link them together here. And every time you add the man to the scene, those elements will, 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 will be carried with that um, other element, that primary element. <clears throat> that's linked elements, okay? All right, so that's scheduling. I'm going to go really over just a couple of these really nice reports. Uh, I already went through some of them. And then I'm going to move over to budgeting. I'm going to take a two minute break because I got to rest my voice. And then we're going to go over to budgeting. Okay. So, and then I want to save some time for Q&A at the end. So the nice thing about Gorilla also, we have so many reports and we keep on adding more and more reports. And the best way to go through and see what they look like is to do what's called our sample. So for example, if I pick one here, art department, and then click this button right here, this sample. This is going to show me a sample. This is sample data. So it's not your data, sample data. So you look at it carefully. You're like, ah, oh, okay. So I've got the uh, ca uh, category and my vehicle. Okay, so this is showing me all my, my, my art department. Great. And if I click this button right here, this uh, pull down, notice you could see every single report. So if I click on day schedule, for example, that's another good one. You have the shoot day. It's a little hard to see. I don't know if you guys can see this. And then the set, in, uh, i.e. the set, the day, night, and you see all your shoot days. Another one, let's go down to see one line. That's a very, that's a classic industry standard report. Uh, one line schedule. Um, I showed you the, uh, the strip board, right? Um, the call sheets here too. Um, the breakdown sheet summary, another really nice report. So we've got the crew call sheet. This is telling you the shoot day and what crew is needed for that day. Uh, and what call time is needed for that day and what their contact information is, is their email and such and such. So very simple to say, okay, perfect. I need this or I need that. And again, like I mentioned before, if there is a gear next to the uh, report, you can customize that report. So if I go into strip board and I want to print strips in black and white, I want to print the thin strips, I want to um, et cetera, print the synopsis or not, so you could customize the reports. Lastly, I keep on saying lastly, but I really mean it because I'm going to go to budgeting, um, is there's this new button here in Gorilla 7. It looks like an Excel button. If you click it, this is a one single place that you can see where to export information. Now, we got reports, which you could print to PDF or print to paper or whatever, but this is exporting. So exporting means like exporting to a tab separated text file or in, uh, exporting to an Excel file. So this allows you to export this information, whatever you want, you can go ahead and click on crew call sheet or data days. Data days is new, but we can export. We couldn't do that before in, in prior versions of Corolla. Um, and then export that information, bring it into Excel or Word or whatever, and do whatever you want to do with it. Okay? So that, in a nutshell, in one hour, it's 11 o'clock exactly, is scheduling. There's a lot more. Um, you go to up here, the Gorilla Guide, we have our 
uh, uh, manuals, our PDF online manuals, our training videos here that are available immediately. And if you're ready to go into budgeting, I'm gonna take a 30 second break. You guys can, can ask me questions if you want. You click on the manager button here. Manager always take you back to the beginning. And I was just, all I was is in scheduling just in this particular schedule, right? Hotel Cucaracha. Notice I've got three other schedules here. I did not touch those schedules, okay? If I were to click on the wild outdoors, for example, now I'm in that schedule, okay? Completely different schedule, different scenes. This is a good episode example, okay? Because we added uh, episode support in Gorilla 7. So what you can do now is you can attach a scene to an episode if you wanted to do that. And that's really important because if you wanted to do one board with multiple episodes, let's say you're shooting in four weeks or five weeks and you're doing part of episode one and part of episode two um, during this, maybe the same day even, or in the same week, you can do that if you attach an episode to the scene, okay? So you could literally do that now and that's a brand new feature in Gorilla 7. So I'm gonna go back to manager, right? Uh, question, can you move information between those different schedules, say if one schedule is season one, the other is season two? Okay, that's a good question. So if you want, that's another really good way to do it also. If you want to do season, well, you're saying season one. So season one is usually multiple episodes per season, right? So um, if you were to do that, you can um, in terms of it depends what information because you have to be very specific. So you can, if you want to do, you could do that with actors. So if I go into actors, I think I showed that when I went into, into here and I could say import actors from another schedule. So you could do that. And this is going to say, do you want to import actors from another? So this could be another season one, season two, season three, et cetera. You could, a lot of, a lot of this import from another schedule, you will see, you'll see it for actors. You will see it for crew. Um, Let's see, what else will you see for locations? I didn't go over locations, maybe locations. I'm not sure. Let me see. Um, no, in locations you can't, right? Um, but definitely actors and crew, okay? So there, there's definitely a lot of sharing information available to you. Um, and not the nice thing, of course, is if uh, a lot of uh, customers say, can you add this or can you add that? Um, most of our... Um, most of our uh, new features are added from customer requests. I have to say at least half of them, okay? Um, and if you go to the manager button and down here, there's a little what's new button. And if I click what's new, um, this, first of all, on this tab right here, the second tab, this is gonna show you what's new in version seven. So if you're familiar with six, you can literally see what's new in version seven. Like remember reuse tagged elements. I was showing, I was showing, explaining that filthy shirt and, and food spatter t-shirt. It'll explain what that is and give you a screenshot, right? Um, so these are all uh, OC, remember the OC option, the on-call, that's a new feature in version seven. Um, there are, let me see how many there are. Okay, 63, um, wow. There are 63 new features in version seven. Okay, and you literally can go through each one and, and look at them all. There is a great uh, video that we did um, like a week ago called 50 Reasons to Upgrade. It should have been called 63 Reasons to Upgrade, but I think that 50 sounds better. So, and that's available on our website. If you go to our website and go to support, I think it's support and then uh, webinars, I think, or learn, maybe it's under learn, learn webinars. You could watch that and you could see and it's a good hour. You can see all these new features. And then what's new in this update tab right over here. This is going to show you literally just what's new in this update. So uh, now it's telling you 7.05. I'm going to give you a little secret. 7.05 is not released yet. We're releasing it um, early April. So very soon. We're on 7.04 right now. And these are the new features that were, that were released in 7.04. These are new features. Okay. These are not bugs. Yes, of course, we'll fix bugs. If we find an issue, we'll absolutely fix them. And we do. Uh, absolutely. But these are not bugs. These are features. So in version 7.05, which is coming out in just a couple of weeks, these are new features that we are adding. Okay. Um, and th those will be coming soon. I forgot the question. Was there a question? I mean, maybe I just went on a tangent. I apologize. Okay. So let me go over to budgeting. Okay. You could still ask a scheduling question if it comes to you, because a lot of time I'm going really fast and it's a lot of information. 
uh, and I understand that. So let me go into budgeting. So when you go into budgeting, there's, a, of course, budgeting is a completely different ball game, okay? A completely different ball game than scheduling, but scheduling and budgeting goes hand in hand, okay? So I only have two budgets here are samples. So uh, you could certainly go in and, and play with these samples if you want. But one thing you can do is if you click the folder button down here, um, there is a forms button down here. And if you click on uh, either samples, templates, or studio, you will see different uh, sample budgets or template budgets that we have that you can use. So in the samples, for example, these are all the samples. Now, what are sample budgets and what are templates? Sample budgets are budgets with numbers in them, okay? Rates, okay? And I'm going to go into a budget that has rates so you can see the numbers in them. Um, so all of these, as you can see, they're also uh, noted noted with rates. So 1M, 1 million non-budget film, 175K, right? Um, 500K, 600K. So these actually have numbers on them, okay? The templates, uh, a little bit different. These are templates. They don't have numbers on them. So, uh, but if you're doing a low feature film, maybe under 5 million, you might want to do that. Or an AICP template, you might want to use that. And lastly, there is what we have a studio button here. And this is a sample. Um, and these don't have, no, don't have numbers, but they have the right accounts, okay? For all like uh, the, the major studios, like Disney, DreamWorks, uh, I think we added um, uh, Netflix and Marvel, uh, I think we just added in, in, in seven and, and Amazon, uh, Amazon, I think we added because that's new. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead into the into one of the budgets. Now, before I do, notice this is linked to Hotel Kukarachi. If you can see that up here, this is linked. So let me go in here real quick and unlink it. Okay, so now it's not linked. Now you don't have to do this, but this is one of the features of having scheduling and budgeting together in the combo. You could link a budget to a schedule. So let me go ahead and link this. I'm going to click on the uh, button here and click link. It's going to ask you, well, we have four schedules. Which one do you want to link to? I'm going to say the first one, which is Hotel Kukaracha. Notice this is linked to. Okay. That does nothing. It does literally nothing right now. It just says that it's linked. And I'm going to show you why and how we can use that, okay, in the, in the budget. So let's go ahead and launch the budget. And I'm going to give you just a quick overview, but I'm not going to spend as much time on budgeting uh, only because... Um, uh, it's it's just as complicated as scheduling, and there's just as many features as scheduling, but it's uh, it, it's just a little more, you know, accounting and numbers and that kind of thing. <clears throat> but I'm going to spend a good 15 minutes on it, and then we're going to do the uh, the last 15 minutes for questions. Okay, so I'm going to try to go another 10 minutes or so and show you this. Not that this is not worthy of an hour. It is. It's just a lot of information, but I'm going to show you where to go to get all that information. So when you launch a budget, you're in the, what's called the top sheet or the summary of the budget. And um, you're going to see the accounts or sometimes called the categories up here, and then a line, which is a section break, and then a, a, a subtotal of that, uh, everything above it. So some, usually sometimes, depending on, on the budget the template, it'll say above the line or below the line. This one happens to say pre-production, production post, which is fine. It's pretty much the same thing. So let's go into, for example, the director. And now this is what's the mid-level or the account level or three levels to, e to each budget. There are actually four, but you don't have to use the fourth level. And the fourth level is very powerful. But let me just show you. I'm not going to get into that, unfortunately. But I think I, there is a whole new video on the fourth level budget, which is really fantastic. So, uh, but let's go. This is the mid-level. This is the second level of the budget. And then, and you can have multiple accounts. So you don't have to have one. This just happens to have one. So let's go into the, the detail level. Now, the detail level is where you enter the, 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 the meat and potatoes of the budget, okay? This is where you're going to enter the rates and the, uh, the globals and the fringes and all that kind of lovely stuff, right? So let's say, for example, let me go into DP. Let me go back because I know that we added, remember in the schedule, we were in the DP and I added a rate, okay? So let me go into your DP, okay? And um, let's, I'll tell you what. Let's delete this only because we're going to pretend that it's not there. Okay, well, that's fine. Let's leave that there. So let's say I want to do my DP. Now, there's multiple ways to do this. One way is you can just click, you know, here. I can say DP, you know, Sam Smith, whatever, right? 
and pop in 2,500. Okay, done. I created a, a flat rate. Oh, what if I could do a weekly rate? So if I want to do week, let's say I put in you know six week uh, shoot and six weeks, and then it automatically uh, calculates six weeks times 25, 15,000. Great, done. So that's a very simple way to do it. Another way to do it is, let's delete this, is to bring in the DP from the schedule. So let's go ahead and click this button down here. This is import crew. So uh, the DP is right here, Andrew, right? And I remember I entered a weekly rate. Let me click the week I did. Andrew Boyle's DP 2200. Notice it says three days because the schedule knows that um, he's working three days. Now, of course, this is a short, I mean, you know, you, uh, this, you normally it'd be longer than that, but just for, just for example sake. So if I click on that, now it says, do we want to import into one line or three? I'll just say one for now and I'll explain the three in a minute. So what that did is not only did it import the name of the DP, right? It imported the, the, the I could put in days here, put in weeks because I had weeks here before, but let's, it was really days, right? Um, well, it's really, it is a weekly rate. No, I'm sorry. No, that's right. That's right. It's a weekly rate. I'm sorry. What am I thinking? And then 2200 and then 6600. So that brought in that rate for that DP, right? So that's the second way to do it. The third way to do it, okay, is if you have the rate book, is to bring in a rate from the rate book. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and go and click the rate book button. And you, it pops up the Gorilla rate book. And I'm going to go ahead and select, ah, uh, I haven't done this in a while. So let me see, camera. Department that's makeup in here. Let's see his camera. Here we go. Camera 600 is the is the uh, union, right? And I want a weekly rate. Here's camera 600. IATC West Coast DP. Perfect weekly rate. Perfect. Um, and click this button. Of course, it's going to be more than 25. Go ahead and select that. And notice what it did. It popped in the weekly rate for the uh, local 600 union for the DP. Now the rates. Um, let me go back into the rate book to show you. And if I click, notice this little button here, little dollar sign, that's telling you that this gives you some information of where that rate came from, okay? That it is a rate from the rate book, okay? Let me go in there real quick again. I cleared it, so, so obviously it's gone. But let me just show you the rate book real quick because this is really a nice addition if you wanted to get the rate book. It is separate, but if you wanted to get it, um, we've got a uh, thousands and thousands of rates here that we, we do update every year and it is a new purchase every year, but there's a lot of work getting all these rates in there. But we have uh, all the LA unions in here. We've got our SAG in here. So um, these are all uh, up to date. They're DGA, our Writers Guild. Um, we have an international tab. So we do have Canadian rates in here, rates from the UK, Australia, even New Zealand. We have commercial rates in here um, and even music rates like the AFM and such. So uh, if you wanted to, uh, you know, select an agreement, this happened, I mean, Writers Guild right now. So let's go with theatrical would be and Writers Guild. And this is, this will show you what the basic first draft screenplay. Now, again, a, a lot of people will, will, will use this, which is great. Um, you still have to have a basic understanding of the union or have a union rep because anyone that looks through this, you're like, holy moly, original screenplay with treatment original screaming uh, flat, less than, okay, is it that one, is that one? A lot of questions here and a rep will help you figure out, okay, you, you, you wanna do this or you wanna do that. So this is a great um, um, time saver, but again, you need a little bit of understanding on how that particular union works in order to select the proper rate. And again, budgeting is an estimation tool. This is not the, uh, the end all be all of your budget. I mean, when you create a $10 million budget or 5 million or 2 million or 20 or whatever, it really is an estimate for the most part, okay? So um, let me just explain a couple other issues here on, on, on the budgeting. So if you wanted to print the budget, you cl click down here, the little print button. If you want to print the top sheet, um, you can go ahead and do that. And this is just the very simple top sheet report, which is basically the, uh, the summary of the budget. Um, if you wanted to print the, uh, the detail report, we have a new classic detail report. This is brand new in Corolla 7. And this is really, really, really nice because what this does is it gives you a, a summary page right here. And then it gives you the top sheet, which we saw before, and then the detail. And the detail includes the fringes 
And in 7.05, which is coming out, like I said, in a couple weeks, it includes the fourth level, right? And I know I didn't go over the fourth level right now, but you can attach a fourth level to a budget. And what that allows you to do real quick is that um, right here, fourth level to another level. So you could dig down even deeper into the budget. And the nice thing about that is let's say, here's a perfect example, right? The camera department, usually when, when you do a budget, you go to the DP, go to the key, right? Whoever the lead is, you go to the DP and say, okay, I need a budget for the camera. The, the UPM is not going to do the budget because he doesn't know what lenses you need and cameras you need. I don't care how good you are. The DP is going to say, no, I don't want that lens. I want this lens or I want this package and I want this light, right? Each DP is different. They have their own favorites. So you go to the DP and say, can you do a budget? Yes. So they go ahead and do their budget. But what you want to do is you want to tell them to do, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't want to do that. Um, let me go back because I didn't want to bring that in. Hold on. I'm, my chat is in the way here. Sorry about that. There we go. You want to tell them to create that budget in Excel and uh, literally just to column one, column two, column three, column four. And you can then import that budget into the fourth level. So you, whoever's doing the budget doesn't have to really do the, D, the camera budget. They just have the DP do the same with the wardrobe department, the makeup department, because, you know, UPM is not going to do you know, what makeup you need. The, the makeup key is going to do that. The lead is going to do that. So let them do the budget. Send them the send you the budget in Excel, and you import it right here. And all that detail will, will appear on that fourth level, on that detail budget. So that's a nice new addition we're adding in 7.05, the ability to, to print the fourth level on the detail level. So very, very cool. Okay. Uh, let's see. There's a lot of different reports here. Globals. I'm not going over globals. Really important to understand what a global is in a budget. We have that option. We have fringes, which is important when you're doing SAG or anything else, uh, you know, uh, to add fringes to your line items. You could defer items. You could use groups. Groups is very powerful. That allows you to literally group items together into a group. So let's say you have a shoot in Mexico and a shoot in Canada and a shoot in you know, another, another locale, Arizona, whatever, and you tag everything with that group. So let's say, uh, you know, and you could color code them. You could then print a budget out just for Mexico. What are you shooting in Mexico and how much does that cost? What is it in Canada? What does that cost? Credits, another very important thing. A lot of times you go to a certain uh, state like Georgia and, and <clears throat> New Mexico, and they'll give you a credit. If you shoot there, $10,000 credit, you could add that here. Um, also currency. You could do multiple currencies. So if you're shooting um, in different uh, uh, countries, foreign countries, and you want to pay that particular crew member in that uh, rate, in that currency rate, or you want to know it's going to be, you know, 10,000 yen or whatever, as opposed to dollars. So very, very powerful in the budgeting module. There's a lot you can do. Um, again, if you go into the training videos and go into budgeting, here are some great videos, how to import Excel into budgeting, because you can do that, uh, how to import uh, movie magic budgeting into Gorilla, you could do that, um, how to export a Gorilla budget, um, all these really great things. What's an add-on? That's another a Gorilla feature that's just in Gorilla, what, what an add-on is. In kind, you could do that. You can't do that in many other budgeting programs. Um, <clears throat> okay, and accounting, I didn't even do that. We have a whole accounting module, and what that allows you to do is literally track expenses against your budget. So if you have a $10,000 um, uh, budgeted for a particular crew member, you could literally go through week by week during production and say, we paid them 2,000, we paid them another 2,000, we paid them another 2,000, that's 6,000. And you can literally do a budget balance report to show how you're doing uh, during production or even at the end of production. How did you do? In, you know, did you, did you uh, spend what you were supposed to spend? Are you under budget or are you over budget? Okay. Um, I'm a little over, I'm four minutes over. I wanted to do this uh, at 11.15. I wanted to stop because I wanted to save some time for, for questions. So um, I'll open it up now. If you guys have any questions about uh, scheduling or budgeting, uh, I'll be happy to answer them. So uh, you're welcome to, uh, to go ahead and chat them in. If you do have any, uh, if I have budget six, how much to upgrade? Yeah, uh, if you have, uh, uh, if, you, if you have just Gorilla budgeting and you wanna go just to Gorilla budgeting from budget to budget, you do get a discount. Um, I think it's $90 discounted from budget to budget. If you have the combo, 
uh, you get $110 off the, uh, just the, uh, the upgrade. And if you wanted to go from budget to combo, you would also, we would, we would extend the 110 discount to that also. So if you want, I think it's 110. So it's 250 for the first year. If you wanted to go to, <clears throat> to the combo pack, um, or, um, 150 if you wanted to go to just the, but yeah, the combo. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, you would get $110 off. We also, uh, for Gorilla 6, it's not, it's not advertised, but I'll tell you now, we also are adding the 2022 rate book for free uh, with the upgrade, which is normally $39.95. So that's a free addition. You just uh, have to email us and say you purchased the uh, upgrade. We'll just go ahead and verify that and send you a coupon to get the 2022 rate book for free. And that will work with Gorilla 7. Okay. And that's a, a nice little addition that you get for free. And uh, can we add custom categories to elements? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I, I think I, I, I went over that, but I'll, I'll certainly do that uh, right now. Uh, if you go to the um, uh, elements, and uh, let's see over here, uh, let's manage categories, right? So right here are the uh, categories that are preset, but let's say you wanted to add a CGI. Like, do I have a CGI category? I have special effects, but I think not. So you could just click over here and say, let's add a CGI. Oops, spawn it right. And uh, you can color code and activate it, right? And um, you could color code it if you want. And now that's a, a category that you can use and start adding elements to, okay? Can you have two? Two different first ADs work on one schedule if they are alternating shooting episodes. Um, yeah, can you have two? Let me see. Two different first ADs work on one schedule. Yeah, I, I, I can't see why not. Um, but again, you can add. So uh, let's see. If you go to the crew, it doesn't prevent you from adding another first AD. So I have, I think I have a first AD here. First assistant director, Sam LaGrange. Okay. So I don't think it, it it prevents you. Let me see. Um, let's call it Sam Jones. Okay. And uh, I think this is what you're asking. First AD, right? So we have two first ADs, right? And two, two of them right there. Yeah. I mean, you can certainly schedule Sam Jones and Sam LaGrange for two different uh, days if you want in the same schedule. No problem. Not at all. Is the database held locally on your computer online? It's locally. So um, if you were to, the, the program is local. This is not a cloud-based program. You can save your schedule in the cloud if you want. So if I go to manager, manager is where you do all your saving and loading. So when you want to load a new schedule that someone sends you or load a new budget that someone sends you or delete a budget or delete a schedule, you do all that here. So you notice there's a delete button here um, and, um, and such. But if you wanted to save Normally, you would click documents right there, and it would save on your document in your documents folder. There's a save schedules folder. There's also a Dropbox button. Now, even though that says Dropbox, um, it doesn't mean necessarily the company Dropbox. It means I, I have it attached to my iCloud because I, I use iCloud. So if I click on Dropbox, notice you can see my path. I don't know if you can see it, but it, my path is my iCloud folder. So if I click uh, save right now, this will save the schedule in my iCloud, my iCloud, not in Jungle software is iCloud. You go ahead and specify your iCloud folder, and then you could load it if you want from the iCloud folder. Um, so that's up to you if you want to use the cloud to save your schedules and or budgets, but everything is saved locally. Nothing is by default saved online, okay? That's a good question. Let's see anything else that I could show you guys. There's a auto, there is a auto save feature that we added in seven. So even though Gorilla does save your work as you go. So for example, if I literally did file quit right now or Gorilla quit and all the changes that I made, notice that you didn't really see me save anything, right? I didn't save anything. I saved my board, right? Once, but that's different. Saving because you can save multiple boards. Okay. But I added uh, Sam <clears throat> Jones and da da da. I didn't save it, physically save anything. But if I do Gorilla Quit and launch this tomorrow, it's still here, okay? But you, it's still important to do a backup save. And we added this in Gorilla 7. In fact, it came up, I think, once while I was clicking around. 
every 30 minutes uh, I have it set and it will give you a pop-up to say, do you want to save your schedule? Now, it doesn't mean do you want to save your schedule um, to now. It means do you want to export your schedule to a save file for a backup? That's really what it means. And this automatic save automatically, if you have this checkbox, which is, excuse me, uh, checkbox by default, will auto version the, the, the schedule. So the nice thing about it is you really just, if you get that message that comes up, yeah, go ahead and just click yes, 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 yes. You'll go into your documents folder and you'll see Hotel Kukurasha version one, version two, version three, version four. Of course, if you keep on clicking yes and yes, you'll have 50 or 60 versions and you'll, you gotta be careful of your hard drive space. And of course, you know, which one you're using, which is the latest, but um, you can certainly do that. And it does it for the budget also. So, um, it'll automatically save and reversion the, the schedule. It doesn't overwrite your schedule unless you de deselect that checkbox, okay? Anything else? There's good questions, very good questions. Um, in terms of importing a screenplay real quick, I'll go through that because I didn't really show you that as opposed to final draft. Um, this is where you would do that. You would go here the first time, click on that plus button on the bottom, and there's a button here that says import screenplay. And we added in version seven the uh, ability to import from multi more uh, uh, file sources. Before it was just Final Draft and Movie Magic Screenwriter. We now added uh, Writer Duet and Fade In, which are two other screenplay programs that are gaining some speed um, in the FDX file format. So we got requested for that, a lot of, a lot of requests for those two uh, software programs. So you can now import those two if you have that program. Um, uh, the .scx is still there, which is both Final Draft and Movie Manager Screener also, because Final Draft imports in the .scx also. And we added this, the Celtics, uh, uh, it's not the Celtics format, it's the fountain format. Notice in the parentheses here, the dot is the actual name of the format, the file format. So the uh, Celtics can export to the Fountain format, and uh, the Fountain format is what we now accept. Fountain is a nice little free open source tagging system. If you look it up, uh, you could see how to format your word processor, Word, Word, for example. You could literally do your screenplay in Word if you want, and you just have to type in a, a tag before each line. So you put like dot, I don't remember what they are exactly, but before dialogue, you hit dot, whatever, before action, you hit dot, whatever. And that dot, I think it's a dot, uh, is a tag. And so when we import that, that's the fountain format, we read that and say, oh, okay, that dot X, whatever, is a dialogue or is action. So we're able to therefore import that particular line properly into where it's supposed to go. Okay. So those are new, uh, new file formats that we can now import. Uh, into Gorilla. So that's a nice, uh, nice feature that we added in version seven. Okay. Uh, 11.30, it's almost 11.30, which is what, uh, it was a nice, supposed to be a 90 minute seminar where I'm hitting right, hitting it right on the dot. Um, any more questions? Be happy to answer. If you have any questions that you uh, haven't thought of, please feel free to uh, email us at uh, uh, support at junglesoftware.com or sales at junglesoftware.com. Um, you're welcome to download a demo uh, that will work for 15 days. You just go to our website, go to support downloads and you can download a demo of the software and, and uh, test it out. Um, let's see, what else? What else could I tell you guys? Uh, show the training videos, the uh, Gorilla Guide, Let's see the 50 reasons to upgrade video, which is really great. So if you are if you are familiar with six or if you have six, uh, or if you just want to see what's new, um, there are a lot of features there that we added, and uh, that's a great video. It's on our website. I just posted it uh, just a few days ago, and it was a webinar just like we did now. A lot of great questions in that. Um, so that's a really good one to watch if you really want to get familiar with with uh, with some of the new features that we added. Um, that's a great one to watch. All right, well, thank you all for coming. Uh, hope you enjoyed the, the webinar. I went through a lot of information because there's a lot of stuff here. There's a lot of stuff. It's, it's the nice, the thing is about scheduling and budgeting, it's, it's, it's all encompassing, but it's exciting. It's really exciting when you start getting down and doing it because you see the, the project, you're welcome. You're welcome. You see the project coming alive. 
And as opposed to writing a screenplay, which is really great, you know, that's fantastic too, but it's still like only in your head, you know, once you start doing this, um, it motivates you to get your film done or your video project done. And I've seen that. Thank you. Thank you for, for that. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, so I, you know, even though uh, you might not be ready to do scheduling, oh, one day, one day, once you start doing it, you will get so excited about your project. I remember this is how I did it, you know, when I was in film school. It's like, once you start breaking it down, like, this is real, you know? Once you start looking at, 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 at how, where are you gonna shoot and where are you gonna get the resources and who you wanna play for the, this actor, it becomes real. And, and that's what we're trying to help you with. We're trying to help you and make it easy as possible, okay? All right, guys, thank you so much for coming. I'm glad you enjoyed the session and uh, I will see you later. Thanks.